Welcome to the Sandcast Podcast. We are back with the little Euro vibes. We got the Lion King. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even ask him to do that. <laughs> it comes naturally. Like, yeah. You say Lion King, he's like... <laughs> <laughs> we were going to have his partner Giannis here, but we just don't need him. <laughs> <laughs> like Giannis said, uh, can I skip this? Um, as you wish. Um, I'm not coming. <laughs> Like, it always, also, even, like, sponsor events, he always, like, yeah. our manager calls and says, uh, yeah, like, we need for SMS grades, we need to do this, but for bad safe, we need this, too. And the end is, is there, like, chance that uh, uh, Alex can go alone? So, like, and if they say, yeah, you can, you can come as a team, you can, or Alex can come alone, so, okay, Alex goes alone. <laughs> 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 Small chance you can yeah. skip it. Just don't give him an option. <laughs> <laughs> I like you every, must come. every partnership needs at least one guy who's willing to do the interviews and everything. Yeah. I feel like there's always that balance. Yeah, so he's taking care of the volleyball part and yeah. like a marketing <laughs> part. Right, yeah. <laughs> so, That's pretty it's much kind of like you and Trev. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless there's whiskey involved, and, whiskey. Uh, yeah. then Trevor's over it for sure. Oh, I think that you are the only team who like both. Both players involved in the social media, like uh, uh, side is side, like podcast and stuff. Right. Yeah. I guess maybe. Yeah, we're trying to bring Trevor back because they had the whiskey with the crabs for a while, but then they were. Yeah, yeah. We brought we, we, we were brought him back. Like, we revived him. But wasn't it just season? <laughs> yeah, it was like a. Or is there out of whiskey? Yeah. <laughs> well, the story no. is empty. <laughs> no, no. The story is that they're a little too lazy, and their okay. cousin was doing the producing, like okay. making it nice, filming yeah. it. And then their cousin moved back home to Hawaii. So then they just, the show just stopped because he wasn't here anymore. Yeah. They just didn't want to get a new one. Okay. <laughs> no, actually, it's like for us, uh, the hardest part for sure is, is producing. Yeah. It's also like all the social media, like producing is the hardest part. Yeah. Just to film yourself and say something or uh, shoot and talk. Yeah. Because we use, like we have interviews. When you start your career, it becomes a part of your sport. Right. And uh, like all the media stuff, it's, it's part of your professional. Yeah. Because we as athletes, we, you are like a brand and you need to sell yourself. And uh, as better you sell yourself, as better product you become as, right. uh, yeah. that's why that's how it's also started with uh, Lion King right yeah so I was just thinking about first of all uh, I started like I couldn't play with a headband because I started to have longer hair so okay. for me it was uh, like I mean with a cap so it was all the time falling so yeah. I could be like Casimir like after every attack, put it back. Every attack, put Kiss it back. <laughs> yeah Casimir like yeah, yeah. they're like how are you playing a cap with long hair mm -hmm. so like yeah, first of all you need to Tight it, like put it like on, <laughs> like very, very tight. Yeah, right. And then I said, yeah, but you need a head. Yeah. Because uh, like any logo you can put on the shoulder or on your shorts, like head always will be the priority. Yeah. Because but, they can't cut it. Yeah. Like yeah, there right. is no picture with, without your head. <laughs> <laughs> so that I said, like, oh, what should I do? And then um, once I was watching Rambo. Oh, no. Like movie <laughs> Rambo. <laughs> and he was like, he put his headband and said like, this is, <laughs> this is it. This is it. So I put headband, and uh, when I started to have longer hairs, and in Beijing, yeah. the Olympics, uh, there was Gitter. For sure, you, everybody knows Gitter, yeah. who is in beach volleyball. Yeah. And uh, he was announcer there, and the first match against uh, Roger Dahlhauser. Uh -huh. And uh, I was so excited. Like, we qualified as the last team. We were 23 years old with Plavins, so we were the youngest in beach volleyball history. And we were last uh, in the rankings. They were number one. And the atmosphere, Olympic opening ceremony mm -hmm. and everything, uh, like emotions were like so high. And uh, when we entered stadium, like my first experience was, it's like Gladiator movie. Uh -huh. When he was, you know, with, with the door closed yep. and the wipe, so the feeling, and they opened the door and you enter the stadium, like 12,000 people with mascots running, DJ screaming. Like third ball or uh, warm up, first ball with toss. Oh man! The toss the ball, you hit the ball, and like twelve thousand, <laughs> like yeah. together with you, like goosebumps. Or like, For sure. And we just played one of the best match. And when the introduction was, and then I said, "Now team from Latvia, number one, Alexander the Lion King." Some of them like <laughs> Lion King. What? <laughs> You're like, ah! <laughs> like ah! And so like every ball, like ah! <laughs> screaming <laughs> and then when we won it was like huge surprise yeah 
And then all the media, like in Latvia and all international, they were, they were putting Lion King, Lion King, Lion King, wow. roaring in Beijing. Yeah. And uh, there was the biggest uh, sport magazine, not only Beach Volleyball, but like biggest sport magazine in Latvia. And they put me on the first page. And they said like, uh, because it was opening game, opening match of Beijing Olympics. And it was also opening sport for Latvia. Oh, okay. So wow. it was okay. the first uh, sport event. So everybody was watching it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so they put like uh, Lion King roaring in Beijing in the first page. And what my friends did, uh, there was in the center in one um, magazine store, they took all the magazines and they put it on top, on, on, a on window, the on the window, on top all other magazines. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it's like I'm roaring. <laughs> so it was fun. And then uh, because uh, my last name, Samoilos, is pretty hard to pronounce for foreigners. Yeah. So that's why. Even like on tour, people started to call me Lion King because sometimes right. people just don't it's know easy, the name. Yeah. And so just Lion King, and it's just stayed with me. I said, okay, guys, Lion King. And then I made this like signature move. Yeah. <laughs> especially <laughs> kids, they love yeah, it. I bet. Like, so totally. I just, like, can you sign this ball? Can we do picture? Can you do? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do that. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Uh, yeah, it's so fun. What a fun moment that must have been in Beijing. I mean, beyond the Lion King stuff, like youngest team in Olympic beach volleyball history. And like you guys were starting to make a mark for Latvia. And then what is still probably today one of the biggest upsets. Yeah, actually it was a big success for sport. Yeah. Uh, before we have winter... Uh, five months so usually like at the beach we have a beautiful beach so try we'll see this year we will have elite tournament hopefully because there's some rumors that maybe change to challenger but hopefully not okay just got message two hours ago from came oh. I, will, I will find out uh, with federation tomorrow um <laughs> so beautiful beach but the problem is like if you're a fanatic you can practice five months yeah. a year but you like most of the people four even uh, three and a half mm -hmm. But after Beijing, uh, the sport becomes so big. Yeah. So they build the same year they build indoor facility with uh, four courts, and then after London, when uh, Plavins and Smedins they got bronze, uh, it was an, another big wave uh, of popularity. And now we have in that year we, they opened three more indoor facility, and wow. now we have five indoor facilities with the city like capital because in Latvia it's one point eight million people. Okay. Only. And in capital, it's less than million. It's uh, like seventy-five thousand. And in Riga, with uh, seventy-five thousand people, we have twenty-nine indoor courts, so five indoor facility. And now we have a lot of kids because before it was only indoor. Go, people, kids were going indoor volleyball, and like in summer they were playing beach volleyball. And then, like a few years, they understood okay, beach volleyball they can start professionally. And uh, now we could like kids go straight to beach volleyball. Awesome. So like. All year round, they can play beach volleyball, they play indoor facility, and then in the summertime, they play outside. And it's like really good. Like every indoor facility has their own school. And that's how uh, Tina Graudine, uh, mm -hmm. she, mm -hmm. she was your guest. Yeah. Uh, that's how she started. Okay. So the indoor facility that was opened in 2008, she started her first steps in beach volleyball in this indoor facility. Okay. And then she grew up and became professional Olympian and yeah. NCAA champion. She's amazing. Yeah. Crazy. So that's that's got to feel good, though, like to know that before you started playing this sport, it was I, I don't know what it was before, but nothing close to what it is now. And, and Tina made it sound like you guys are like the Trinity, the guys, <laughs> you three, right? Uh, yeah, we are three. Plavins, uh, Plavins, Plavins, and, Plavins and us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And my father and he was co our coach. So he started. All. Ah, OK. So my father, when he started playing beach wall, he was the first like professional beach volleyball player. He was the first who was playing beach volleyball on all the other guys. They were playing national tours coming from indoor. And then in summer, they were playing beach volleyball. Okay. And then when summer is over, they're back indoor. And my father was the only who was, he was in the business. And then he was playing beach volleyball almost like all year round. And uh, when he finished playing, he was professional. He was seven years uh, national champion. And then he played last two uh, years of his career. He played in Spain. And uh, then when he finished his professional career, he became um, uh, our coach. And uh, before, all like our professional players, they couldn't even make to uh, main draw. So they were going world tour, but I think in uh, seven years, they qualified twice. And uh, when we started to play, me and Plavins, uh, we partnered together, we were 17. 
And my father said, okay, like in five years, we need to qualify to Beijing. And when Plavens came, he was libero in uh, okay. our best uh, indoor team. And when he came to his, one of his games and he said, like in the changing room, he said, like Samuel Senior said that uh, we, we, we will qualify to Beijing. So like it was like one second silence and then everybody started to laugh. Oh, wow. <laughs> because they're like crazy, like nobody can qualify the main draw. What do you mean right, like right. Olympics? Right. Yeah. But he, my father really believed, like even me and Plavis, we said, okay, maybe. Like, but Olympics <laughs> sound something like from different world, like, yeah. like Elon Musk uh, saying about Mars. So it was uh, <laughs> something, like, something like that, like Olympics. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we have summer three months. And uh, yeah, but we were just practicing, practicing, practicing. And then we started to um, go to Egypt. We started to have some sponsor money. And in winter time, we went to Egypt. It's four hours flight. So we just straight down. Okay. Yeah. In a different continent, Africa, but it's, it's really close. Yeah. Like, and then we were practicing all year round, started, started competing on the world tour. And uh, I remember I was 17. I was watching first uh, games uh, on TV. Uh, like World Tour, and I remember Ricardo with Loyola, uh -huh. and then uh, Benjamin and Marcio. So I, I was watching, like, I said, like, wow, these guys are like gods. Loyola yeah, had like, the headband, uh, right? Yeah, he had yeah. headband. <laughs> <laughs> he had headband. And uh, I was like, Loyola was uh, one of the best, one of my favorite players. Like, Loyola and Ricardo, this yeah. team was like, I was cheering for, for them all <laughs> the time. And uh, in three years, we played in Italy, we played against Ricardo Emanuel, and they were number one ranked uh, team. And we beat them. Oh, what, really? And we were like, we played perfect match, like zero mistakes. Yeah. Like perfect play, and we beat them pretty, like pretty hard, like 16 and 17. And we were like, <laughs> both, you know, like, Woo! And they were just, after the games, they were sitting and drinking. And, and this happening, like, in, in four years, I was watching them on TV, like practicing, and then I beat yeah. them, and yeah. it happened pretty fast. And then in that moment, I understood it was like a click. Right. So I said, like, wow, everything is possible. Yeah. Like really, I said, like we can be number one. So and then starting from this, I was 22. So start, starting that moment, I really b started to believe as well that right. we can go to Olympics. Yeah. It was a, a beginning of Olympic qualification. It was second tournament, uh, second tournament of the year. And uh, in this moment, I said, wow, really, we can make it. Yeah, yeah. We've been number one world rank. Yeah. So, okay, let's just push more. That's <laughs> crazy. It makes me think, like, how, like, obviously, going in and beating the number one seed gives you the confidence that you can yeah. go to the Olympics. But what gave you the confidence to, like, even get to the point where you could play again? Like, you know, get into that event. Yeah. Like, you guys must have had some kind of confidence to get to that point like actually like how is it's also i think it's it's kind of destiny how i become professional it's okay one thing is my father is my coach but at that time you know it's really hard it's it feels like uh, beach volleyball is pretty cheap sport like if you live in california i mean now uh, <laughs> what you need shorts a few balls right. and uh, just the people to play and practice with somewhere to live that's yeah <laughs> somewhere yeah. to live bad. but i mean uh, comparing like ice hockey like right. all the equipment right. and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. so it's golf uh, right a golf yeah. like unbelievable or tennis right, right. like to rent uh but uh, if you look from the other point of view if you live in europe like it's really expensive sport because with so much travel like in world tour happening like all the sports happening all around the world and uh, until you don't reach a le level of top 20 it's really hard to earn with prize money yeah and to get good sponsors but uh, so my family at that time they couldn't afford me to become a professional at least like to pay all my uh, like uh, all my expenses right. i was already 20 years, I started, I, I went to college and I had, this was a moment to s switch from high school into to college mm -hmm. or to professional sport. And then, uh, so I was planning to go to study medicine and uh, I was uh, like last year in high school, I was already every day going, I had four times, uh, four times a day, a week, four hours, chemistry and uh, biologic. So I was preparing to go and study medicine. So I passed all exams. Yeah. And uh, just before European Championship, underage, it my uh, was second uh, underage. Uh, our first tournament with Plavins. 
And we have systems that if you get gold in underage tournaments, you become Olympic uh, team candidate. Okay. So you get some support from, gov uh, from Olympic team, uh, you get scholarship ah. and uh, some funds for traveling and tra training. So my mom called me. So I went to under 20 European Championship. My mom called and said like, super happy she had like yeah you got scholarship yeah. in university <laughs> in college she was like so happy like in the medicine she, because she wanted me to be, become a surgeon yeah <laughs> and my father he wanted me to be a professional athlete but yeah. he like he had this dude like he can't afford to pay everything for it right uh, all the travels and then we went to under 20 and i said to my mom okay if we win i try one year i will try to to play professionally if not i will play I will still play practice, but I will go study medicine and right. then full time I will be in college and in my free time I will practice. And we won. So we won <laughs> and uh, it was a big surprise. And then, so I said, okay, one year I will go. And then next year we played under 21 world championship. Uh -huh. It was in Rio hmm. and Pedro Solberg yeah. and Bruno. Yeah. So they, they were my Jeez. age and in Brazil. <laughs> no, they, they were separate teams, separate, okay. but they, were, they both were playing in For sure. uh, and we play, and we went and we won again. Jeez. So we were extending for one more year. <laughs> and then next year there was under 23 European Championship and we won again. And then we qualified to Beijing. Oh wow. And so it was like one year, another, another, yeah. and then we qualified to Beijing. And then when we qualified to Beijing, we got really good sponsors mm -hmm. and uh, we started also earning some money in a world tour as a prize money. And that's how I said like, it's, it's, it feels like a kind of destiny. Yeah. Right? How we become professional athlete. Just needed like opportunities really. Yeah. And I feel like having, knowing that it, it'll end if you don't perform gave you like the pressure to, it's like, we have to go. Whereas if someone maybe had a lot of funding and like was like, ah, if we lose, we'll just try again next year or whatever. Yeah. Maybe yeah. wouldn't. Yeah. But my, my best motivation, like people asking me, what's the best motivation? When, so I didn't go to co uh, medi uh, medical college. So I went to study banking system. Not so prestigious, but uh, also as I continue to study in college. And in the first year, uh, so we study eight months and then two months you have practice in bank. So in, uh, it was January, February, so two months I work in the bank. And like you go, you, you go to the office in the bank from nine <laughs> till six, every, five oh, days a week. That hurts my heart. And I mean like, <laughs> <laughs> it's normal for people, but like for me, with my personality, like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, it was the worst two months. Yeah, I can see life. you gripping the car. <laughs> <laughs> it was unbelievable. I was counting like, I was, wow, exciting! Like, I go work in the bank. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> like after one week, I said like, wow, it was like the, the most boring <laughs> time of my life. <laughs> and then I said like, wow, this is. I need to play so good. Yeah, <laughs> it right. was the best motivation, like to play as as good as I can. So yeah. I. I should never work in the office, please. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it was, that was the best motivation for me, like to play really good, not to work in the office so you can earn money with the beach volleyball. Yeah, I and like I think it. you're speaking to every beach volleyball player in the world right now. It's right. like, whatever we can do not to sit in an office, yeah. we're doing it. <laughs> it's the worst can be. The worst mornings I wake up, I still walk down to the beach, unless it's miserably cold and windy and there's no sun. I walk down there, I'm like, yeah, I better work hard so I can keep doing this as long as I can. <laughs> this is my bad day. It's a good day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you won back-to-back-to-back to back to back gold medals as a kid, um, but it took you till that win against Ricardo and Emmanuel to really for it to click and say, we can do this. I'm curious as to why the youth ones didn't resonate. Because, I mean, a U21, U23 World Championship, I mean, that's nothing to just sleep on. Those are really good tournaments. Yeah, it was. But... Uh... We just, uh, my father was confident and he was just, we were just listening to him. And my father is, he's real, uh, you know, if you watch movies uh, about Marines, yeah. you know, usually like uh, traditional Hollywood movies when the Marines like screaming and yeah. like really tough guys. So that's about my father. He was uh, really tough and uh, he was screaming at us all the time. He had like some 
strict punishment. <laughs> like if you fall and then he said, like, stand, relax. If you fall, he said, okay, you like to fall? After practice, you do 100 falls. And, like, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so it's like, if you stand, you stand on your knees when you're playing in defense, okay, you like to stay on the knees? Okay, after practice, you run on your knees, uh, 10 cores. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> so it was like, it was tough. And uh, yeah, so we were just playing and, uh, but we, we started to become really successful like straight. Like my first world tour was in Poland, the Starry Blanki. It was a really nice tournament. I love that event. And uh, first tournament, first world tour, we played two rounds of country quota because it's, Poland is really close to Latvia. So all the Latvian teams were going to play. So we had country quota. So we played two rounds of country quota. Then it was three rounds of qualification. So oh, we geez. played three rounds of qualification. We, we went to the main draw, and then first uh, we had no points, and first uh, we played against the number one seeded. It was, uh, they were Germany. Uh, Reckerman, Olympic champion, Brink, he yeah. played with, uh, uh, no, he played with Dickman. Oh, okay. With the other guy, it was... What year is that? 2004. Okay. Yeah, 2004. Wow. <laughs> Long time ago. <laughs> yeah, I'm old. <laughs> You're coming up on two decades. No, no, no for USA, no. Like, right, I mean, for yeah. Europe, yes, yeah, but yeah, for right. USA, no. You're just yeah. a John Hyland is turning 50 this year. <laughs> like, <laughs> He's when, I see, I mean, like, <laughs> when I see this guy playing, I feel like, I can still ball. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can still ball. I think, <laughs> I think he has collectively raised the uh, average age of the entire world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's giving confidence. He's a, and Ricardo, he's like... Yeah, Ricardo. Giving, uh, so this guy's like giving confidence and was also a Jay Gibb. Yeah. giving confidence to the old guys that <laughs> no guys you can still play you can still go to olympics yeah, yeah. and the guys like adrian carambula and uh, uh alex uh, huber uh -huh. from austria yeah he played in, in rio he got uh, bronze in the last world tour itapema itapema oh yeah that's right he's uh he's like, i don't know in in foot but he's, he's like five uh, foot ten five yeah. foot nine yeah he's small five nine the Hobbit, we used to call yeah. him. <laughs> Skinny guy, but yeah. these guys and uh, Adrian Carambolo, he's these guys, they yeah. give confidence to other guys that even doesn't matter how tall and what's your shape, yeah. it's uh, you still, if you are dedicated and you, if you're a fanatic, you yeah. can be playing Olympics and you yeah. can win medals in the world tour on the highest level. And ridiculous skills. Like yeah. Nobody can hit the side of the ball like Adrian. And Adrian, he can manipulate and bend that thing. Yeah, it's like ball control. For I mean, sure. It's wizardry. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. <laughs> so wild. But your career, I mean, you started, you mentioned that was 2004, and we're in 2022. And you, you don't look like you've lost any energy. <laughs> you got some I love, not really, I love beach ball ball. Like, I really, I'm a big fan of beach ball ball. Yeah. And still, like, some people already played how many, like, 16 seasons and uh, I always play all tournaments yeah like all the people yeah. say, oh, they, they play all tournaments yeah if I have a chance if, if there's no injury yeah. I go for sure and play I never skip tournament and uh, most of the tournaments I skip because of my partner's injuries yeah and uh, yeah I just like to play <laughs> and uh, if you come and say any day like even Friday Saturday let's go play four men usually sometimes uh, we have practice and then my father calls me and say like you want to pass by, we will play four against four. Yeah. You want to come? Mm. And I just go and play. Yeah. Because I didn't start two against two. I started to play four against four or five against five, uh, with just people showing up for yeah. indoor. Like usually guys like all who played uh, before professionally and then were retired. So the friends of my father. And uh, so I was playing with them. Okay. And it also was why I was also successful in underage because I never practiced. I never played Indoor, so I switched from basketball to beach volleyball. Oh, awesome. And uh, I never played with kids. Ah. So I, w I grew up with adults. So nobody was doing shots. Everybody was going in hard driven ball. Like right. I was 16 skinny, but everybody was going yeah. like boom, full power. So when I started to play underage, for me, was it's like you come from indoor to beach volleyball. Ball flies so slow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for me, it was like everybody's like hitting so weak. Yeah. <laughs> like everybody's <laughs> shooting, ball flying so slow. Like speed of a ball was. Um, so for me, I felt like a fish in the water yeah. playing with uh, kids. Because when I was back for practice, I was with adults, and then uh -huh. I was playing in competition again with oh, wow. kids. So that was a huge advantage for me. Right. That's uh, exactly how Karch Karai grew up. He yeah. grew up when he was 11, he started playing in men's tournaments. Yeah. And because there was no like junior youth boys beach volleyball back then. And so he was like, when I would play teenagers, 
was amazing. It was right. way yeah. easier. Yeah. <laughs> These aren't grown men. I remember when I first came on tour, well, uh, was my first event was Durban in, uh, what is that, 2013? 20... 13. 13. It's a yeah. tournament when we become first in the world ranking. Yeah, exactly. This tournament I will never forget. Me neither. It was my first FIVB, and, and you guys were number one in the world going into it? or We were fighting. We, we had 60, before this tournament, we had 60 points difference. Uh, and the step was 40 points. So if uh, Pedro Bruno will have two places higher than yeah. us, they will pass us. Yeah, so it was an open event in yeah. Durban. So the top teams usually aren't going to go, especially go to South Africa. It's really far. Yeah. Uh, but I signed up for my first FIB and the top two teams in the world are there. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> We're not supposed to be here. And we were like going like yeah, they were full going power hard. because for us, like, and we met in the semifinal. And I want to I hear the story because I remember what happened to you. It's unbelievable. Like, so we come in the Durban and Nelson Mandela died. Yeah. Uh, same week. And so they canceled all events uh, on Sunday and they moved all uh, games uh, Saturday. Mm. So usually on the World Tour, we play two matches a day. Sometimes in loser brackets, you can play three. But they said, okay, you play Saturday, you play four games, if you win. Yeah. So uh, we started at six in the morning, and uh, it was so hot. Yeah, oh my God. Like it was, it, I mean, like all the day. Yeah. yeah. So we played quarterfinal match uh, against Grosso Brothers, and uh, so they, we were putting water on your feet, yeah. Yeah, not to burn your feet. And it was so hot. So after second match, uh, we have to play semifinal with Brazil. And uh, like, it's super important. Like, because if you lose and they win the tournament, they will pass. Yeah, right. And uh, so we have to play, and we go in the, in the ice bath. Uh, we sit in the ice bath, and then Yanis left, and he said, okay, I will take a nap. I go eat lunch, I take a nap. So I sit in the ice bath, I stood up from the ice bath, do two steps, and I start to cramping. Like so hard. And then I first like legs, and then my full body started to cramp. I couldn't walk, so I fell oh, no. down. And like, like medical stuff, they, they took me, they helped me, they took me to the medical room. And it was like two hours, I was cramping crazy. Like in one moment, I just, everything like, well, was dark. And it was like, I was freezing because with no blood circulation, I was freezing. I said like, can you put the heaters? Everybody like, where is it? Like, what's the heating? It's like, <laughs> we were like in the sauna. I was, I was like, like, like white and all. So people were they, like four, four physios holding my muscles so I'm not cramping. And I said like, probably I was draw. Yeah. Like, it was so painful. Like I said, okay, come on. One, we have, have a two hours game. So like two hours we wait. And so what they, they did, they bring cattle. So they, they were boiling uh, water, they were putting on the towel, and then hot towels they were putting on the muscles, and this uh -huh. muscle become warm and it's released. Okay. So they, they start to put uh, hot water and with hot uh, towels putting yeah. it on the muscles, and then it's, it start, my muscles start to relax a little bit. And, uh, but I also think because it was, uh, I was dehydrated, and also because of little, like I was a lot, a lot of stress. Right, also, yeah, sure. you know, you, you're fighting for a first in the world ranking. And uh, so after it, like after two hours, they started to move my legs a little bit, my yeah. hands. <laughs> and then I, I, they helped me to sit and then we stand. And then they said, okay, now if you move, you probably wouldn't cramp. But if you stop, you will cramp for sure. So I said, now you have one, uh, one hour till the game, just go and walk around the venue. And then Yanis came and said like, Oh, from a hotel, like, I said, like, Yanis. Yanis, okay, I probably, uh, like, we started to warm up. I tried to jump, but because I was cramping for two hours, my muscle was so tired. Right. My jump was like that. <laughs> so, Yanis, all balls on two. Yeah. And because we, we work a lot on two, so, mm -hmm. and then Brazil, they saw, it's like, I, I barely can move. Yeah. And they, my jump, like, I couldn't attack without, uh, without net tape. So every serve, they were like, but they tried, the problem for them was they tried to serve every ball, like, specifically on me. And that was, like, easy serve on two. And yeah, Yanis, uh -huh. he said, ah, I don't care. He said, like, <laughs> yeah. he said, we withdraw, okay. If you try, let's try. If you cramp, we yeah. And he's and Yanis played unbelievably. Like he was killing with a surf. Like I don't know, he could get like ten aces. Dude, but he, he was just killing with like. I mean, he still hits the crap out of the ball, but 
At that time, I remember watching him being like, oh my God, you do not want to get in front of she that thing. He was on fire. I saw like Yanis, I was, we have nothing to lose yet. Okay. And he just destroyed them. He kills them. And Brazilians, were, for sure, they had some pressure as well because they had to win. Right. And we won that match. It's <laughs> unbelievable. And then second match we play against Plavins. <laughs> they, because Czech Republic, uh, they uh, withdrew, they didn't play, so we play against Latvia. And it's like principle. Because uh, Plavins and Smedin, they have uh, conflict okay. since <laughs> London Olympics. <laughs> okay. And uh, so Yanni said, like, we can't lose this match. <laughs> so I will put you under net. <laughs> we can move, I put you under net. <laughs> so Yanis, and we, I, I watched this like uh, one month, first time. Like one month ago, uh, I was looking for some content uh, yeah. for my tutorials for Instagram. And uh, so I was, watch I was watching for this match uh, and I watched this match like I couldn't move. I couldn't jump, but, yeah. but somehow it was forced match for them as well. And the big guy, Solway, like uh, we have one big guy, he already retired and uh, he died. So <laughs> he, he died earlier than me. <laughs> so, and we, we won in a tie break 15-13. Yeah. We won, and with this point, we become the first in the world ranking, and we won a tournament. And this emotion, like, these two games, I was, like, in a deep meditation. Like, really, I was not thinking about the game. I was thinking about every muscle of my body. Yeah. So I was listening and waiting not to have <laughs> crap. Right. Not to make too strong, too fast move, too, too high jump. Like, yeah. Everything like to, need to be in the, this. So this was a limit. If I go a little bit beyond, it's like I'm the out. The most yeah. efficient you could possibly yeah. play. <laughs> That's true. And somehow because I was so focused. Yeah. And uh, so I was so tired. Like then for two days, I was like a vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> like in the evening, like game was out after a boring ceremony. I couldn't move. Like two guys, like one guy from a Russian, a Russian national team and like Solovets, who we beat in, in the yeah. final. They helped. They took me to the hotel, and there was American physio Martha. Uh -huh. She helped me a lot. So she bring me a lot of medicine, and she was always with me, help like put some, giving some electrolytes stuff like this. And then the people, oh, let's go to players party. I said, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> I was like, I was dead. <laughs> Next day, everybody went to safari. Yeah. It was amazing safari. It was, oh, such a nice safari. Yeah, I went. <laughs> I, spent, I spent 36 hours in bed. <laughs> like, I was dead. Like, wow. I was, people like, Yanis bringing food to me. Like, but I, I couldn't move. <laughs> <laughs> But oh. this tournament, I will never forget. Gold. <laughs> yeah. And then we fly, and next uh, we fly through Istanbul. Okay. And uh, we had six hour layover in Istanbul. And that was huge in the airport. We had city mayor, all the federation, because it's huge success, because small country. And yeah. we become first in the world ranking. We won a tournament. So there were like people saying like 150 people in the airport with the posters, no with the flowers, and the media, with the national TV. Wow. And then uh, we were in layover and we just fell asleep and we missed our flight. <laughs> no way. <laughs> wow. And we woke up and uh, our flight was gone. It was like, oh! We ran and we saw our, our plane. Oh, took no. So it's like, and we call a manager. It's like, Edgar, uh, uh, it's a little problem. Uh, we're not on the plane. We, we're not on the plane. So <laughs> tell all the people, all the media and city mayors that oh, uh, no, we are not <laughs> I love how supportive Latvia is of their yeah. athletes. Because Tina and Anastasia, they said that when they won the Olympic qualifying tournament in Haiyang, that they got back and there was a full-on orchestra. Yeah. Waiting for them in the airport. Like, not just some people, like, hey, congratulations, here's a good sign. Like, an orchestra in the airport. Yeah. It's amazing. Like, uh, so for you, I understand, like, 1.8 million people. So it's like one city. Right. And imagine, like, for you, it's like sp small city, like Cleveland. It's like Hawaii. And imagine I you have the, the like only sport, okay. the only sport, you, for example, you have is Cleveland. Uh, right. Basketball team, and then this team qualifies to Olympics, and right. they go and they succeed in Olympics. Yeah. So for sure in Cleveland there will be stars, yeah. all of them, and all the city will go and meet them. Right. So, but for us it's just if you, for you it's a city, but for us it's a country. Yeah. So that's why it's we have huge support. Yeah. From I, people. I mean that's so cool. I also think it's cool that you guys were able to, and you know the people back home were able to value the number one ranking in the world because I feel like 
the world tour or the world of beach volleyball in general doesn't value having that number one ranking. It's like you won a few events, okay, season's over. It's like, what about the team that's number one? They won the world tour or they didn't, right? Like they don't claim that that title. And they don't make you guys are the only it. team that, that I remember being like, they're trying to be that number one team. Not the only team, but like, not, not many people valued that. And I, that still blows my mind. Like, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, because f- for other sports, I mean, uh, like being, like for tennis, being number one in the ranking, it's uh, its main goal. Yeah. Okay, winning Grand Slams, but uh, reaching the top, it's a uh, yes. main goal. And see how long you yeah, can stay and, there. And uh, <laughs> for beach volleyball, it's, yeah, okay. Like, if you ask who is beach, uh, who is number one in world ranking, most of the people will say Vikings. Right, yeah. Yeah, but Vikings number five now. Yeah. I mean, because uh, they succeed in the Olympics. Right. Yeah. But a uh, few tournaments before Olympics, there were 17s, 17s, 9s. So yeah. they played really yeah. bad. Thanks yeah. to you guys. Yeah. yeah. And you then uh, <laughs> Qatar, they were dominating. Right. Qatar, they played so consistently, like every second tournament in the final. Yeah. And there were some Mexico, there were three tournaments in the final, two silvers, gold. Then uh, Sochi, they yeah. were in the final. Yeah. And so they were really good, and then they got bronze, and uh, they, like, they deserve to be number one in the world ranking. But uh, many, t- okay, people who really, really follow the beach wobbles and know that uh, Qatar is number one in the world uh, ranking, but right. s- uh, some people, they don't know even. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't, I don't like that about our sport. I, I wish there was a champion crowned at the end of every year. And the fact that, like, you know, at least your country, like, at least un- you get understood something. that yeah. and, like, celebrated it, like, if I end up the number one in the world rankings at the end of the year, maybe besides Olympic gold, that's the greatest thing you can possibly do in the sport, right? It's true. Maybe better. Than, it's harder than winning the Olympics. Olympics is only one event. Yeah. It's more prestigious, but that's the hardest, best thing you can do in our sport yeah, is to be finish number one a year, at the end of a year. Number one is just sustained excellence. Yeah. And that's why when you talk to Jake or Rosie, they'll both say that their number one accomplishment in beach volleyball is they finished 2012 ranked number Unbelievable. one in the world. Like Rosie played that year. Yeah. Unbelievably Insane. good. Insane. Superman. And also, like how they reach, I remember, uh, they were also really close with uh, Emmanuel Alisson. They uh-huh. fought Starry Blanke was a tournament. It was the last tournament where they had really, really close. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, st- straight after. So it was Olympics. And then... Like next, usually like after Olympics, like all teams who play in the Olympics, so they're a little bit count down. Mm-hmm, right. So like next tournament's not that important because everybody tired and uh, so main goal is Olympics. But for them and for Alisson and for, for Brazil, it's also really important to be in the world rankings. They yeah. always uh, fight for this is it because the federation also, I think it's like a world championship Olympics and world in the, um, world number one. World number one. It's really important for federation yeah. for them for support. And I remember, like, it was, like, before Starry Blanc, is these two teams, uh, Alison Emanuel and uh, Jake and Gibb, uh, how they, so uh, it was huge pressure. It wasn't like, oh, okay, they just won. So yeah. they also fight till the last tournament, till right, the yeah. last game. <clears throat> that was an early year for them, because wasn't there Olympic qualifying, was that the year that the Olympic qualifying came down to the... Rome. Yeah, it came down to Furby and Nick. Like they could have lost the Olympic bid the tournament before, right? Was it Rome? Or one or two before, maybe? No, it was another. uh, No, it was uh, uh, qualification to Olympics. It was in Rome. When Nick and Furby were really close. Really close. And And we lost. And and we lost to. I lost to Gib Rosenthal. Oh, you did? And in that, by that game, we were up 11 7 in tiebreak. Oh, wow. And you there was like a uh, deep <laughs> hit in between hands of my partner. Oh. So it was out, so it should be like 12-7. And, and uh, Jake is really good with referees. He's like, oh, touch, yeah. touch. And he's like, <laughs> sure. he was the best on tour. Like when you see Jake is saying like, you trust him 100%. Yeah. Saying, like, <laughs> That's what I hate saying, about Jake. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, like all, because he's a kind of per, uh, person that uh, if Jake is saying so, for sure, it right. must be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And she's like, touch, touch, touch. I was like straight. I was in the middle between hands, like no touch, even close. Touch, yeah. touch. And then the referee, oh, okay, touch. I was like, what? Touch, red card. Oh, no. <laughs> like, oh, no. I was so angry. I was so pissed. In, instead of 12-7, like 9-11. And, oh, we saw, and then we lost like 16-4 in. We lost. 
and they was running around the court because we, by that game they qualified to Olympics and it was my first chance to go in the Grand Slam to go in the semifinal and I was so oh, angry <laughs> oh my game. god and <laughs> That is insane. <laughs> because uh, Nick, uh, Nick and Thurman Gary right there. <laughs> and uh, and uh, Nick and uh, Thurman Gary, they were really close. They're and they were still really, mad at you they, for that. <laughs> <laughs> because we beat them twice, two Grand Slams oh, before really? in Moscow oh. and before. So we oh, were like, <laughs> <laughs> thanks to us, Nick did qualify <laughs> to London. Sorry, bud. <laughs> That's so tough. We beat them twice in the playoffs, and then we lost <laughs> to oh. Jake and Rosie. <laughs> so gnarly. But then your countrymen got them back. Uh, yeah. Giannis and uh, was it Giannis and, and Plavins yeah. in London? Yeah, yeah. They beat them in the quarters. I yeah. remember. And it's crazy because they never made higher than ninth. That's nuts. Oh really? In uh, they played three years and they made twice. Higher than uh, he made it twice quarterfinal and higher in Rome in 20, uh, 2011. They got fourth in the world championship. Uh-huh. That's how they get points by fourth in uh, and they qualified to London. And uh, second time they were higher than ninth, it was in London. Jeez, it's like what is up with Latvia and just when the stages are biggest, man, you guys perform. Yeah, really. I mean, you like? and Plavins come out, beat Phil and Todd, first Olympics ever, and then Tina and Anastasia made a great run and I mean, like maybe no so pressure. Did so did like talk no to pressure Plavins. and uh, maybe less pressure and then. <laughs> <laughs> whatever's in the yeah. Because I remember there. in um, in Rio when uh, we were number one in the world ranking, we went to Rio and. Uh, Everybody, like all our country, yeah. they were, okay, just, just go and bring this me- uh, gold medal. <laughs> so like everyone, that was like, everyone was saying, okay, so we will probably will have gold in, the, in beach volleyball. <laughs> oh and God. then what, what other sports we can get medals. So everybody, like all the media, all the fans, yeah. they made a huge presentation before, like all our span- uh, sponsors, like for sponsors was great. Yeah. But they made uh, presentation of uh, big uh, screens in the city center where they said, like, here you can watch beach volleyball, all the games. So they bring us there with a lot of media attention, like people, fans. Like, so, and that's how we went to Olympics. Just before, they said, like, cheering for us. And they said, yeah, okay, let's go, guys, let's go. Yeah. Bring this gold medal. <laughs> 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 you know, like unbelievable pressure, right? Like, uh, and you go in the game, like every game, and everybody said, like, oh, "Okay, let's go." Okay, yeah. let's uh, play. Okay. And we had Cuba as the weakest team in oh, the race. Yeah. <laughs> a terrible like, draw. We had Brazil, Evandro. Then we had um, Schalke uh, and Saxton. Saxton. Yeah. So we beat them in the opening match, and then we had Brazil and Cuba. We lost really close to uh, to Brazil, and then Brazil lost uh, to Cuba, and Cuba won all the games in our pool. And we play <laughs> Cuba, and they like these guys. The first time, you see them first time, so you have two matches to analyze. Yeah, yeah. you never played against them, and they were <clears throat> unbelievably athletic. They were running and jumping, and we lost. And then we played the match, so we were down, so we were losing. So we lost first set and second set. And we knew it, like, small points are important. Right. So we said, like, me and Yanis, two points till the end. We said, like, if we just, we were leading 18-16. We said, like, if we stop now and lose 21-18, we will be in the next round. Like, if we just stop playing yeah. and just lose, we were up uh, in the second set, 18-16. <laughs> yeah. uh, so uh-huh. if we lose, we will be in the next round. But if we continue playing, we can be out. And that's what happened. Oh, so we no. won second set, and then in the third set, we lost 15-8. Oh, and oh, by no. two small points, we were out uh, of a tournament. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow. <gasps> that's crazy how that and works. And that, like, because for me as an athlete, I used to, you can't give up. Right, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. every point is important. It's principle, and, uh, yeah. It's a principle. It's like, and this was the only time in my life like I should have gave up. Like maybe, <laughs> oh maybe, my god! Maybe the principle, like, and that's maybe so sometimes tough. you need to like push your principles. Yeah, right. But that's tough because then you had to be thinking like, well, what if I did the points wrong? 
Because that, I mean, right. I'm terrible with numbers. I, I don't know points. That. I'd be like, I think this is right, but I would not have the confidence to throw the rest of a match right. on thinking I'd be I have like, points uh, right. Are you sure? Do you have a calculator? <laughs> yeah, let me see that spreadsheet. I, I could not figure out. But, but it was unbelievable because uh, then before the match, it was huge pressure from the media, from the fans, everything. And then also, like, before last match, it was also huge because everybody started to talk about, not about beach ball, but about Mathematic. Oh, like, really? Like, before match, we know, we're going, and every, uh, every, all the media, like, everybody, like, okay, next match, so, okay, you, you won first match, you lost oh. second, and then Cuba beat Brazil, so, for next match, do you know, like, how many points you need to get? <laughs> <laughs> like, we need to oh win, and then 100% yeah. we will be in the, we'll yeah. be first in our pool. He said, yeah, but still, you can lose, and still you'll be in the next round, so how many points? And then everybody, like, sending us points. You can lose by six oh, points. No. You can no. You can lose by five. <laughs> and then discussion. You know when they have a podcast after the sport yeah, like yeah, Olympics yeah. Uh, studios. Right. Like how many points we calculated that it should be like they can lose by five points. They're like guys, like it's yeah. beach volleyball. You need like win, right, <laughs> not yeah. to lose by five or six points. <laughs> right. right. Oh my oh. god, that would be me- so mental for me. I would not want to hear any of that. Mm-mm. That Cuba team though was unreal. It was so good. I never played. I don't even think I played in a tournament with them because I also missed those two years. But but it's unbelievable because Norseka. Yeah, they played Norsecas like so, and then just to. showed up at the Olympics. The first time they show up in the World Championship in oh, Hamburg. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, 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 in Netherlands. Yeah, Netherlands. Yeah. In Netherlands, the, and the when Hague. we had it in four cities. Yeah. And first match to play Spain. Spain was like five. In the world ranking, yeah. like playing really they good, were balling. and they just destroyed them, two zero. <laughs> and everybody, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, Cuba, right. zero ranking points. Yeah, like never played any world yeah. tour. Just yeah, and then, but actually, like when they started, they played really, really good, but they played pretty primitive volleyball, uh-huh. very athletic, but pretty. Primitive, and then when they started to play World Tour, everybody started to scout them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 and uh, yeah, so then they just couldn't play right. at the same level like they, how they started first two tournaments. Yeah, they were so close to beat Russia and go in the semifinal in the Rio. That quarterfinal right. is one of the best That's matches right. I've ever seen. Unbelievable how the Russia it, it, survived. It was like 29 27, 26 24, like 18 16 or something. It was bananas, it was amazing. <laughs> It's wild that they could pull that off with how much experience they had. Yeah. But thank God they weren't on the world tour all the yeah. time. <laughs> That's like every volleyball team or player from Cuba. Like yeah. all the great Cubans in the on the indoor. It's like they would have the best national team by far. Yeah. But every, but every time they leave, they defect. so many of them defect. They just yeah. don't come back. Yeah. Like and Leon is yeah, I so played him like in if you collect uh, Cuban guys, like from all, like oh they, they, they switch, uh, they change uh, citizenship. But if you're now like original Cuban who started from Cuba, if you like five years ago, you collect uh, all these players yeah. from a, be- a best club, yeah, like the national teams, the they will go for gold. <laughs> yeah, uh, they for will sure. really like team yeah. who one of the teams that goes for uh, Olympic medal in uh, oh, for sure. That's crazy. I played against Leon in um, Junior World Championships indoor, and then he never played for Cuba after that ever again. <laughs> I remember he hit a he hit a bick out of the middle and hit like eleven feet, like almost ten foot line in the corner. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> all right, this guy's different <laughs> now. He's he is what he is now, but yeah, they're just freaks. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that that he's not on the beach. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, when you when you started playing, your dad kind of picked Plavins, right? It was like, hey, you're libero, you should play with Alex. What does he see in, in like why Plavins? Why did he pick him? Uh, so the situation was uh, we had tryouts for underage. Okay. Because only one team could go, and uh, we were happy that uh, I'm 85, Plavins 85. Bro, uh, Smedin's brothers, uh, 80, 86, 87, Yanis 87. And we had uh, three more guys, same age, like really good level. Okay. So our trials, we had four teams, like unbelievable competition. We had uh, four tournaments underage, like Latvian uh, under uh, 20. And then only winner 
goes to under 20. Okay. And uh, so we played, and uh, so the level was so high, and I was playing against uh, Plavins. Okay. And the problem was that uh, nobody knew me. So they all were from indoor clubs, so as I all competed uh, many years, but I just came from adults with one guy from indoor who never played beach volleyball, okay. who was just a big guy. And uh, me and my father, when we started to play, uh, we already started, I was 17, he was always, I played with him, he was always passing me on two. So okay. I was always, and I was only hitting because with adults, you can make, make shots, so right. I was just going and hitting. You know? So I started to play with this indoor guy, so everybody like, this is a new guy. So they serve me, I was just going and smashing the guys. <laughs> like, oh, we are not playing like that. Yeah. Come on, man. Like, it's not against the rules. Like, it's not against the rules, but I mean, like, yeah. uh, nobody's playing like that in, uh, in our community. So then I started to serve uh, like my indoor guy, and he was pretty good uh, passer. And I was just started continuing doing the same, but without block. That's yeah. on two. And we won like three tournaments in a row with just destroying everybody. But then Federation said, uh, sorry, but we already sent an uh, application uh, and uh, Plavins with his partner, they will go. And Smedrin's brothers, they will go. We got, because we, we made tryouts, but we were sure that they will win. So first year, I didn't go. <laughs> it was huge yeah. conflict. Uh, yeah. but so, so they said, like, sorry, we didn't know that you will come. <laughs> we had to send an application brutal. before the tournament. Yeah. And then, um, but we were competing already a lot. And then uh, my partner said, okay, I will, uh, I will go play indoor. And my father, uh, he said, he asked Plavins, would you like to go and uh, to s maybe try for next year to go under 20 European Championship, but we will try to practice, like, and practice beach volleyball. Because before it was, okay, let's go for practice. And the practice was, they meet, play a game, or play side out. That was the only practice. Yeah. And my father was the first one who started, because he, he worked 16 years before, he worked with indoor uh, team, with uh, girls in, uh, in college. And uh, so he said, like, we will start with drills. We will do exercise for beach volleyball. He was also watching on TV. He was playing also in Spain, so he, he knew a lot about beach mm -hmm. volleyball. And so he said, like, we will do drills. We will work on technique. We will do all the pocky shots and uh, all, all the stuff. And uh, we were the first team who was really practicing beach volleyball, not only playing. Okay. And uh, so Plavins said, yeah. And, uh, but Plavins was still playing indoor libero. Okay. So Plavins, he was crazy. He, he had... Indoor, sometimes he had indoor practice in the morning. Then he sh went to the beach, like 20 minutes drive. And uh, we have practice uh, at the beach. And then he went for a second practice indoor. And it was like three months he could do like this. Jeez. Wow. Like, That's uh, a lot of like, Pla uh, like Plavins is a really hard worker. Yeah. And uh, really he, he, he can, uh, he also like, that's why he's not tall and like he's not jumping high. And uh, but because with the hard work, he, he really uh, achieved what he he deserved. Yeah. What's what's he doing this year? I haven't seen. Has he signed? Yeah. Uh, they split after Tokyo, mm -hmm. and uh, everybody asking why. Yeah. And uh, it's another topic. <laughs> and uh, yeah. And then the, he called my brother. My brother is twenty-two, and uh, he called my brother and asked, uh, "Would you like to play together?" So as a partner, I was really happy for my brother because the problem was for him, he was all the time like uh, extra player for us. Right. He was practicing with us, but he was always without the partner because yeah. his partner all the time, there was one guy from indoor, he couldn't switch to beach volleyball because many players, they think, they think okay, indoor, beach volleyball, what's the difference? Just yep. go practice and go right. and play highest level. If you, if you play on the highest level indoor, I, will, I can play on the highest level uh, beach volleyball. So like how many players we can like in, um, I play 16 years, maybe five players right. who could play on the highest level from indoor uh, yeah. beach. It's, it's really a completely different sport. Right. It looks the same, but it's different. <laughs> and uh, my, uh, my brother didn't have a partner. When Plavins asked him to be his partner, I was really happy for my brother. And I also like Plavins, he's really good as like player's coach. Like he's really experienced, so I said he can uh, teach my brother a lot. But then in the first training camp, he got a uh, jumper knee. So probably it's not like in the training camp, but he started to have pain in his knee. So he made surgery oh, in he did? Uh, December. Oh, 
Yeah, okay. they had training camp in December, and uh, after training camp, he started to have pain. He came back. Uh, he made MRA, and the uh, doctor said, you can do. But it was the best year. He, if he had to do it, it's the best. But he, he hoped he will be ready for World Championship if they can make it. Yeah, okay. for sure. I've seen, I've seen your brother out. All the time. Looks like DJ Klasnich is, yeah, is his filling for now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but that was uh, that was how it is uh, with my brother. Like last three years, he's uh, trying to practice with uh, anybody he can. Yeah. There's no partner, I've so him, uh, uh, all the time with different partner. And last yeah. year, because uh, uh, they uh, fiancé with uh, Kravchenko. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Oh, they're engaged? Yeah, they're oh, engaged. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. So we can, can, can you cut this? <laughs> I don't know, you broke maybe it's a secret. <laughs> yeah. You just broke the news. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, but you'll cut it, okay? <laughs> we can. And, uh, we can <laughs> and uh, yeah, and so he was, uh, and also the problem was because uh, Graudina, she's in study, she studied in university, so uh, uh, Kravchenko, she was alone. And that's why they were, he was alone, she's alone. So they were all the time, he was co coach uh, of her. And right. he was, they were here last year, two months. Mm -hmm. So okay. my brother, I, I call a few players. I call Kane, yeah. because I know Kane really good. Yeah. Uh, he was in my beach box camps uh -huh. a few times. And uh, I asked some also local guys, Troy, uh, to just if they have a chance to take him in the yeah. training process. Right, yeah. Yeah, I've seen him getting out a lot. He's had no shortage of, of practices. Every time <laughs> I walk up and down the strand, I'm like, oh. There is again. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, there are some few players who need partner. Yeah. And always. I think like California is the best place where you can, because so many players and the teams are switching all the time. There is always somebody who wants to practice but don't have a partner. Yeah. So yeah. If, if I wouldn't have a partner, I will move here for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everyone's switching. <laughs> um, one thing that I think has always stood out to me, um, watching you guys like you, Casey Patterson, um, a few more guys over the years, but um, you guys have always kind of focused on a lot of stuff off the court, extracurricular, you know, media stuff for the most part. Um, you mentioned earlier you, you have your camps, uh, which you can get into for us. But, like, what made you um, think that you have to do more than just play volleyball uh, to make a living or to, to be a part of this sport? Because I think it's really important for... Like, you guys are part of the reason why I do stuff like this, and I want to have an impact and not just sit back and wait, like, oh, okay, uh, I'm going to wait for the tour to do it for me, you know? They're going to put me in front of the camera, put a microphone in front of me, and it just doesn't happen. So, like, what inspired you to do that? And uh, tell everyone, like, what you have going, because there's so many things. Yeah, so first thing, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, very early I realized that uh, I'm a product. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, to have good brand on yeah. my head I need to be a good product I yeah, need to yeah. have a good package right so people are interesting in me and uh, even I've, if I'm not uh, in other words tennis player McEnroy yeah he wasn't the best but he was always he was always getting wild cards for the tournament because uh, the way how he's he was acting and I understood like for me it's easy like uh, it's uh, I'm I'm pretty open and uh, it's uh, easy. I'm, uh, uh, I like people, I yeah. communicate with people. So, like for Yanis, it would be hard. Like if you say to him, okay, you're, you're, you're a product, you need to sell yourself. For him, right. it will be out of a comfort zone. Yeah, yeah. For me, it's, it was easy, so I understood it. So I started to build a package, I started to build a brand, uh, Lion King, then right. I made the social media hashtag Mr. Lion King. <laughs> and, um, and I also, when I was studying, uh, my, my parents, my mother especially, she was always saying, okay, this uh, sport is really good. Yeah, sport is really important, but studies is even more important. So studies for me also were really important. So I was studying banking systems. And uh, when I was 22, I participated in the European Union uh, program. It was dual education, dual career. That uh, 90% and so I had all the numbers and statistics that uh, the problem is always like I was studying with the same guys in, in the university. So my career started really fast. I started to earn money. I was one of the first who had his own uh, apartment. I had one of the first who had a car. 
So I, I was traveling, I was 20, 21 years old, I was already like uh, every second uh, week traveling all around the world. But my, my, uh, all of my uh, colleagues in university started really, really slowly. So my career went really fast and there it got slowly. But I understand like when I did these studies that at the, like for example, say four years old, we will just go straight down. Right. They're already like top managers in the, in the banks. Mm -hmm. And then uh, 40, for men, you're young. For athletes, you're a veteran. But for right. men, 40 years, uh, my father is 64. I, I see he's like every day going, playing beach volleyball, going to the gym, lifting. Yeah. And I see at him how he's enjoying life. And I said like, come on, he's 64, he's yeah. enjoying life. Like 40, it's like when I was 20, I said, oh, 40, you're old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. And uh, so I straight understood, okay, I will play beach volleyball as long as I can because I like this sport. But uh, life is not ending with, uh, at, uh, when you finish your professional career. So I said, okay, I need plan B. Yeah. And I also have two kids. I need to take care of them. I have um, my wife uh, also. I have f four extra people I need to take care of. And uh, then I decided, okay, I, need to, uh, I started to do camps. I started to do camps. We started only with Latvians. We started in uh, 2013. Like after London, I told you, like second wave of popularity. Mm -hmm. So we had a lot of indoor facility, a lot of amateurs going to beach volleyball. So I started to make camps. So first camp, we had 24 people only from Latvia. We tested everything. And then next one, I said to my business partner, like, we need to go international. We switched from Latvian, we switched to English, all the coaching. We, we, and then in the second camp, we had our first uh, foreigner. And uh, in this October, we did in Mallorca, we had 370 participants oh, wow. from Jeez. 31 countries. Wow. And our coaches were Stajanovski, silver medalist. Oh my God. We had, uh, so we had like Troy Field was uh -huh. our coach. We had uh, like every second World Tour player was a coach in uh, my beach box camps. And the idea is I want to bring uh, top athletes. So I have World Tour medalists, Olympians and coaches of this World Tour medalist and Olympians. So right. highest, highest level of coaching. Yeah. And uh, for sure, like, because camps are always saying that you can learn, you can't learn beach volleyball in one week, like 10 right. days. Yeah. But what we can give, like, we give you so much information, like some try, try things new because also schools are different. Like European school is different. Brazilian school is different. Mm -hmm. American school is different. And how you teach like technique and uh, basics and send, and that's why I try to bring coaches from all around the world so they bring different things so sometimes they say like okay we have access and, yeah but you, you're teaching me th that way but Troy said the uh, right. uh, opposite way he said it's really good so try how he teach you and try that way and maybe sometimes I, I know people who are like 10 years serving float surf and they couldn't uh, make a float surf and then one guy from Brazil, Harley, he came, he shows, okay, try that way. Yeah. He tries the other way and it works. Yeah. And he it. comes to me and says, oh, we had <laughs> the best practice with Harley, <laughs> with the floats. I finally figure out how to surf. Let's yeah, yeah, and, love and, that's, and what I really like about it, like community is growing. I need to meet Harley like now. Like people. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get into floats. I want like an like example. But I mean, like people, they meet each other. They, we have a close uh, Facebook group. They still communicate. They in the contact. They say like now we had Zanzibar uh, three weeks ago. We did a camp in Zanzibar. Wow! And uh, we did Miami. We did Dubai. We did Tel Aviv. We did uh, we so yeah. So we, we do wow. camps all around the world. So now yeah. we did Zanzibar. We did uh, Thailand. So we did Cuba. We did Havana and Varadero. How do you uh, find the time for this? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> <It's insane. laughs> and uh, so uh, we, we do this camp also and people like traveling with us mm -hmm. and right. we grow in a community and they stay in contact and they, for example, they say, okay, and then they're visiting each other. So it's like, like guys writing, oh, I will be in Germany, like guys, so you know, who's from Germany, would you, I would like to play beach volleyball. I will go to, for my business and can we play with you? So they meet and they play and so people who travel around the world, they meet each other and they play it's so because cool. Everybody has, knows their local community, mm -hmm. so they come and they play, and then they say, okay, let's go to a world tour. And we had, for example, we did in Miami, South Beach, it was at the same time, so it was uh, Fort Lauderdale, mm -hmm. 
and then next week was beach box camp. So people came for a tournament and then they stayed one more week for a camp. And uh, so they were coming and cheering and it was really fun, like community for, because it's so international camp. Right. So the people from around the world, and for example, Rangeri, he was a coach uh, in uh, our camp. So they came with the Italian flag cheering all the group for, yeah, uh, for uh, Rangeri. The fans then we play. Rangeri. So they come and they cheer, they took another flag, they took a Latin <laughs> flag and they cheer for me. Wow. <laughs> and so the players was a French guy, Crow. So uh -huh. they go with the French flag cheering for him. And, wow. then, and then in the evening they were partying all together. And uh, it's, it's so really cool. cool. Like, and also like fan communities like, all the time. Because one thing is that they see me on TV and it's the good thing about this, they come close to you because they see us right. on the world tour. And it's like, still, it's a barrier between us. For sure. Mm -hmm. But when they come to the camp, they can ask questions. Like, we, see, we live in, a hot, in one hotel. Like, we eat. As they can, like, at the beginning, they're very shy. Can, we, can I sit with you? Yeah. And, yeah, and yeah, so, yeah. so this is extra value that they get in Beachbox camp. For sure. I That's love awesome. It. That's great, man. Yeah. Uh, I really invited you last year. But you're not reading uh, <laughs> the right message. <laughs> no, I, I, I think I remember. I read it like... Uh, Maybe a, a month after the camp. <laughs> <laughs> I told you Instagram's not yeah. good for messaging me. Yeah. WhatsApp, we'll get it. No, but that does sound fun. I'd love to get involved. Maybe we get the sandcast out there. Yeah, That'd we had fun. 24 courts. <laughs> That'd be fun. It's uh, it's exciting that you guys are hosting. And uh, how, so I've been pronouncing it Yermala. It's Yermala. 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 Okay, Yermala. that's fun. That's like because you guys hosted the CEV. Championships, right? And then that because this is my crazy. city. This is, I'm from this city. Okay. And uh, Tina, girl yeah. Tina, okay. she's from the city. So we awesome. are two, and my brother, and so we are three. We are from this city, and uh, it's like it's big, uh, wide beach, uh, not really wide uh, beach, but still very long, and uh, with nice nature because it's forest. So it's beach and the forest, yeah, not buildings. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Phone call. Yeah, we are. I did promise you that it wouldn't take more than an hour. We are at an hour six. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's all right. Oh, uh, yeah, it's because it's, it's Giannis. He comes to pick me up. Uh, <laughs> I, I tell him. Giannis is here. We went a little overtime. <laughs> tell him his interview starts now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> FaceTime him. Yeah, put him on speakerphone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you uh... are... <laughs> Say straight, otherwise it's some good words. <laughs> Giannis is um, outside in the car, probably waiting for him, being angry maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but um, is there anything else before we let you go, maybe that uh, you want to bring up once you uh, get your messaging done from? <laughs> But once you tell Minus. your driver, <laughs> and anything yeah, we're, else? We're along because they're waiting for we you. can, yeah, no, we're we're done here for yes, sure. Sorry. We went a little bit over, but anything else you want to mention before we head out? Thank you for coming on. No, yeah. really good. I really like how you organize everything. It's really nice that you. I can maybe share something and maybe inspire some other yeah. young for sure athletes. And it's uh, it, it's how it's happening. It's. Uh, Sansa, uh, Sansara cycle. So uh, I was inspired by uh, other players, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, now they retired, and now it's uh, our turn. Yeah, for sure. To inspire our kids, inspire yeah. uh, young generation, and um, so then after 20 years we will sit and watch them. Totally. And yeah. Cheer for them exactly. with uh, our national yeah. flags. <laughs> and, uh, you're saying, Going to the camp, <laughs> <laughs> partying. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, we we're doing a great job of it. I know when we had Tina on. Um, you know, she gushed about you know you and Giannis and and Plavins and said that you guys are kind of the reason for the boom, this growth that you've seen in Latvia. So definitely, you can take a lot of credit for that. Congrats, and um, maybe you should retire now. <laughs> <laughs> no, he beat, he beat me in the scrimmage <laughs> today. <laughs> Damn it! We need like I, I need them for my camps. When I retire, I need uh, oh, yeah, somebody yeah. who right. still uh, yeah. continue popularity of beach volleyball. <laughs> they need to take your crown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Thanks, All right, man. man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Alex. Alex. It was nice to be here. I'm, oh, yeah. watching, I'm watching your podcast. Nice. Not all of them, but uh, like some good hey. guests. Oh, I love it. It means we're doing something right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Shoots. Shoots. <laughs>